Okay, hello and welcome to the JSIPFS Core Dev Team Weekly Meeting on May the 21st, 2018. Uh, I didn't say this last time, but uh, can we have a volunteer note taker for this week's meeting, please? Raise your hand. Yeah, all well, wicked. Thank you, Jacob. Uh, cool. Um, please add your name to the attendees list on the hackpad. Uh, I'll just paste that link into the chat in case no one's, in case you've not got it. Um, and we will get started. Uh, after everybody's added the weekly update. Cool, okay, so uh, round of updates. Hello everyone, I'm speaking already, so I'm gonna go first. Uh, yesterday, yesterday week, <laughs> uh, I spent a lot of my time fixing up um, tests, trying to figure out where the flakiness is uh, and fix that. Um, found some kind of bugs that were really hard to find, uh, but when I found them, it became quite obvious that why why there were te flaky tests. Uh, things like uh, callbacks not being called back, really hard to track down, uh, and things like uh, intervals uh, being like firing callbacks multiple times because uh, the interval wasn't cleared. Uh, so that's that's all good fun. Um, so I'm still working on getting the 0.29 release out the door. Uh, I so was working on those test fix them ups. Um, what else? I did do a couple of reviews for, um, so I reviewed something for Vescos uh, on the, which is just documenting API path. It was originally to uh, fix up someone's, uh, someone's had opened an issue about, they'd, they were proxying to the IPFS API and they wanted to know how they could, uh, how they could actually create an API um, instance uh when the path for the api was on slash ipfs uh, and apparently uh there is this undocumented property that you can pass to uh ipfs api which is called api path um which would have allowed him to do it really easily if it was documented but it wasn't documented so anyway we found out and uh documented that um and that's all good um and so lidl submitted a uh a fix for um url escape paths when adding from url um and I, i've already looked at that a while ago um i was just waiting for flaky tests to be done before i could rebase and, and hopefully that will go in i'm hoping to release that pretty soon um so then uh what else so yeah, I'm currently blocked on um, just, I need an update of IPFS API in the IPFS D controller module. Um, and then I'm hopefully be clear to release 029 if all the tests um, go through. Um, and then it's on to, my next thing on my list is uh, kind of high priority to look at Node 10 stuff if it's ready, uh, and then hopefully release a patch release for 029 to, um, uh, to fix Node 10. And then it's on to more reviews and releases and things like that. Uh, that's basically me, I think, for the uh, for last week now and next week. Um, cool. Does anyone have any questions? Okay, Rad. <laughs> uh, next person on the list is uh, Jacob. Yeah, so I spent all of last week looking at the Node 10 issues. Um, that is, I'm running some final tests today um, with all of the fix, Alan, that you added. Um, it's looking good. Uh, the biggest pain point is IPFS being a dependency of all of its, or a lot of its dependents, making testing difficult. Um, so I've got that going now. I think one outstanding issue I have is the experimental warnings um, for FS promises that needs to get fixed because it's breaking the uh, exec in node 10.1. So 10, I think is fine, but 10.1 is a problem. Um, so I'm looking at that and then provided the test pass of my latest build and they're looking good. PubSub was the last problem and that looks like that got fixed in one of the recent PRs. So hopefully that should be good to go um, in the next day or so. 
So, and then once that's done, I'll go back to uh, the private network. Perfect, thank you. Uh, who else? So, uh, Volker, are you around? Is Volker here? Volker is not here. Uh, so what does he say? He has been digging into BitSwap. He is not blocked. Uh, and then next is create graph sync prototype. Uh, let me just double check that no one is waiting to be entered into the thing. No. Okay, cool. Um, so that's Volker. Um, next on the list, uh, we have got Zane. Cool. So, <clears throat> This week, uh, sort of picking back where I left off like a couple weeks ago, which is just like working on uh, getting pull streams integrated into like IPFS. Um, pretty close on the PR. Uh, just need to patch up and make sure that all of the IPFS like files uh, and file handling is handled properly within the DAG update changes that I made. And so once I make sure that those are compatible um, with the breaking changes in IPLD, then it should be full circle. I'll submit a PR for that. And then uh, probably reevaluate IPLD CBOR um, pull request I had, um, which was to make sure that the options uh, like for like choosing your own hash algorithm for the multi-hash is like able to be like completed. So I have a PR out for that, but I just need to follow up and see like if the rest of the format changes like work out or have like landed since then. So I've got a little bit of catching up to do. That's it. All right, thank you. Um, where are we, Dimitri? Hey. Hey. So last week was uh, mostly uh, reviewing PRs and digging into some issues with IPFT CTL, uh, evaluating some of the uh, NAT implementations available for Node. Um, the whole bunch and specifically, there's not a lot, honestly. Um, and starting the implementation of the LibDB NAT. Um, with Hopefully one of those in, uh, available implementations or at least extending one of those uh, to support TCP. They all support UDP, mostly no TCP whole bunch. Of it, so. um, and doing some perf analysis on the Pullplex stuff. There's a PR. If you guys have time, please uh, you know, uh, take a look, uh, leave your comments. Um, next week is going to be more heavily with the PNAT. Hopefully I'll start implementation. And um, that's it. Cool. Thank you. Uh, so next we have Vesco, who is not here. He's told me that he is at the Lisbon Hat Week, and he's in a meeting of sorts. Uh, so I'm just going to read out uh, what he's put here. Um, so service worker gateway OKR he's working on, uh, he decoupled service worker gateway repo into several verticals, um, display files of several types, uh, on service worker gateway. Okay. Uh, and then he's working on issue always done. Sorry. Issue five, eight, one IPFS behind a proxy. Yes. So, so that was the thing that I was talking about, um, with the API path. Uh, documentation, I think. Um, uh, what else? So blocked, not blocked on anything. He is at the Lisbon Hack Week. Uh, he is working on the Service Worker Gateway OKR. Uh, he wants to divide into modules, uh, several modules, refactor, and have those modules released. Hooray! Releasing. Uh, have first version deployed to js.ipfs.io. Cool. Okay. Uh, rad. Uh, so so uh, that's Vasco, uh, and we've got, right, okay, so Diogo is also in a meeting and can't attend. Um, cool, so uh, done. Finding a way to improve how we handle errors in JS IPFS. Yes, uh, I'd also like to uh, have a look at that um, too. Um, so I will endeavor to have a look at that 
issue this week. Um, work in progress PR to remove boot from constructor and stop using event emitters. Okay, that's work in progress. Uh, blocked, not applicable. Uh, he is also Lisbon hack weaking. Yeah, hacks. Um, and uh, add pub sub to the file exchange example. Okay. Cool. Uh, so then uh, that's that's Diogo. Um, next up is uh, MKG Machi. Um, so I have been uh, working on the LPDP rendezvous module. I uh, fixed some things about the RPC because uh, it was only registering to the only peer uh, to the first peer it had discovered that had the rendezvous protocol enabled, but um, Victor is also working on that, so he told me that uh, he is going to work on that and um, yeah, now I probably will just wait until he's finished with my, before doing something about my PR and I do not have anything planned for next week, so I'm open for suggestions. Right, okay. Uh, you want to be given something, is that right? Uh, yes. Cool. Okay. And not just that you're uh, you're going on holiday. Okay. Cool. We we can. Uh, I guess the waffle board is probably the best place to look for for that sort of stuff. Um, maybe I can, and maybe David can help point you in the most priority direction. Um, cool. Yeah, I will just uh, look to the waffle board and see if I can find anything. Yeah, that would be aces. Um, cool. Uh, next up is a King Alex. Hello, I am also the Lisbon Hack Week. It's going on behind me, in case you didn't see that earlier. Um, last week I was working on MFS still, uh, so I got it all integrated with uh, JSIPFS, which is quite cool. Started running uh, the interface tests against it, and uh, most of it exploded because. It turns out there's a lot of uh, discrepancies between Go and JS when it comes to IPFS implementation. The most fun one I found was that if you IPFS add an empty file, you get different hashes uh, for Go and for JS, which was a lot of fun. So um, yeah, it's great, step one. <laughs> uh, so I submitted a PR that should fix that, and I'm kind of just going through and making sure that these things emit the same hashes, because a lot of the tests depend on the hashes. And so it turns out a lot of the tests are wrong. Um, other interesting stuff like getting back empty strings from Go, I think, as a side effect of it having a type system and, and other kind of boring stuff. Um, yeah, so I'm going through that. Uh, that's, I think it's going to be like a long term, ongoing project, just making sure everything's aligned. Um, yeah, cool. So I am also going through the docs now for the files API because we've got a lot of crazy stuff like passing arrays in as arguments, like arrays of file of like source and destination paths and instead of like two discrete arguments and, and that kind of stuff. So just trying to make the API a little bit better, you know, get a better developer experience out of it. Um, yeah, hopefully we'll be able to release it soon. That'll be me. Cool. Thank you. Awesome to see progress being made there. And I saw the pull request starting to come in. So, uh, cool. We'll, we'll get to them. Sorry, Carl, you got a question? Yeah, for Alex, um, I would love to talk with you after this meeting, maybe in Slack or something, or I can hop on IRC about how you're testing those things. Because I'm running into a lot of similar things, uh, just not even, just even last week, finally figuring out really how to test in Go and then in JS. Um, that doesn't seem to be written down anywhere. Um, so if I, if we could talk and maybe uh, get something going from that. Sure, I'd love to know how you did it as well. Because I just end up hacking a source code. Like I think it should just be a like a environmental variable that you can set. And <laughs> one That's or the ironic other. you say that. There was one we took it out because it turns out J the JS IPFS API repo uses Go and runs the interface tests. JS IPFS uses JavaScript and runs the interface tests plus a bunch of extra tests that they each have in themselves. That's right. what I. Do. So we can talk. Yeah, the the tests are extensive and um, sometimes tricky to understand. 
Just getting to this point of understanding, I think, uh, is is a big deal, and I think it, it'll help us see a way forward. Nice. Okay. Um, any other questions, or should we move on? Cool. I think it's Guy. You, you're next, anyway. Okay. Well, um, in my trying to get the bit swap stuff in JavaScript up to the Go spec, I discovered a couple minor things in the testing of uh, I think it was uh, IPFS CTL. Um, submitted pull requests for those. I uh, got some really good feedback. Those are either awaiting review or awaiting release. Um, and other, outside of that, I'm I've got my <clears throat> like three up to I think two or three different feature additions into the JS IPFS for uh, bit swap stuff. I'm working on a ledger for peer, which I have a pull request into bit swap for that. Um, and at this point, seeing what I'm seeing about all the tests and stuff, I've got an open question in uh, a comment in core about how to approach this between juggling the three, three repos, kind of developing a script. Um, and once we're a little happy with that, I'm just going to take all of these and make them one because they're not, there's not a lot going on there. It's really just adding a surface area um, to JSIPFS. Um, and that way I don't have to juggle all these PRs while we get things uh, closer to how we want to release. Uh, between the core API and JSI PFS. Okay, cool. Uh, thank you. Um, so next up, we have someone called Name. Ah, drinking. Um, questions. Cool. Okay, so what have we got? So Jenkins started using Yarn over NPM in November 2017. Is there a reason for the switch? I couldn't find a clear one, as we are not using package locks and several of the JS IPFS dependencies also use it as a dev uh, dependency. It's causing a lot of issues locking down versions, which is aggravated by using different package managers. Um, yeah, I don't know why Yarn is used in Jenkins. Um, I know that um, it. Uh, so I was talking today with uh, Oli Oli Zilla, and he. I think Dimitri has a thing. Oh, I'm uh, sorry. Answer. Yeah, that would be good. You go. So, <clears throat> sorry. <laughs> So the, the reason we're using Yarn is because it's got better parallelism. And so it wasn't breaking as much when you were running multiple instances of a Yarn at the same time. Because right now our uh, Jenkins be potentially running at the same time. Never know. Yeah. So, uh, so yeah, that, that was the reason. I think when Yarn had package lock-in and when we started implementing the um, Jenkins stuff, Victor would be able to, to tell everyone about this because he was the one that, that worked. But this is what I understand from my conversations with him. And uh, I, I really, uh, NPM didn't even have package lock-in back then when it was looked at. But that was the main reason as far as I understand. Nice. I think you cut out just in the middle at the most important part there. Oh, um, I can repeat. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Can you guys hear me still? Yeah. Okay, perfect. So yeah, uh, so Yarn was used better, uh, used because of the parallelism because we were, we don't have the Jenkins runners uh, isolated. Uh, they run on the same box and they can potentially be running concurrently. Um, several runners said it, that's it. So. Um, so yeah, the yarn has better uh, parallelism. It doesn't um, mess up when you run to uh, yarn installs at the same time as often as npm does. I I guess it 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 might have improved now, and we also have npm package locks now, which I don't think we had at the time we started looking at this. So. It might be might be something to look into, and maybe we can standardize on one because I think most people are using npm perhaps um, and um, um, also look into the package lock in features that npm offers right now so but that's what I know okay have we started this is the next question, but have we started adding the package locks back in because I know we were freezing on that um, in the past? with keeping those out, we're still not adding those? No, and I think, um, 
So I would like to use package looks and instead, but one of Victor's suggestions right now is just um, set the version, don't use any flags, just use a specific version for in all our package chasings because we have been running into some issues with, um, um, with the, um, sorry, the, the, I'm missing the word, what's the word for uh, the version spec? Anyways, um, the, um, we've been running into some issues and the reason we have not yet standardized and using package uh, logs is because we have uh, different locking mechanisms for different package manage managers, so they're not compatible. So if people are using YARN, they, we can't just uh, assume that they will be picking up the package log for NPM and vice versa. So um, that was a good point that he brought up. I, I was I was looking into just staying the horizon and just going for the package logs. But yeah, I mean, we have different package managers and there's probably more coming. Um, and they potentially will all introduce their own locking mechanisms. So, so we'll stand the on that. Um, okay. Yeah, I, that the biggest concern there, I think, um, was that you talked about like getting the actually getting the package locks to specific versions because this is one of the things that came up with node 10 is when we have JS IPFS pulling in uh, the daemon controller and then the daemon controller actually uses IPFS as a dev dependency and then we run into problems where now it's installing two different versions of FS extra and so when the daemon controller runs it's actually running the old version which has promise problems um, or it's using an old version of level down, which doesn't compile with 10. So you just look at locking that down then. Okay. Yeah, that is a pretty big issue in general. Okay. I'd love to hear what you guys think about package locking and, and how to approach that. Is that a sound solution? I think I thought about it a little bit, but and I think that maybe setting the version to a specific version is actually a good thing. But open to to, um, to hearing arguments. Right. Yeah, so I've had some experience with setting them to this to a specific version, and whilst it kind of works on that, it's only on that level that it will happen because dependencies of the thing you're depending on will still have, uh, you know, the the version ranges, um, and so you'll still get dependencies that are deeper in, in the tree than your kind of direct dependencies that um, that have different versions and they'll keep changing. So um, in my experience, you you kind of, if you want to lock down your versions, you kind of need a lock file or a shrink wrap to do it. Um, yeah, that's my experience. I also think we've got all these, got so many little modules and then we'd have to, you know, release, like we have to update the package for JSON in all of them when they, one of our uh, libraries changes its version as well. It just comes a massive overhead. Like, I kind of think we should, like for our stuff at least, we should just like release version one of everything and use carries. Yeah, I, I think uh, it probably needs a bit more, um, bit more thought and discussion. Um, I don't know all the details behind the package locks and why they're they're out and and uh, and the the current version numbers of of everything and why they're less than zero they're less than one sorry um, so yeah uh, go on Dimitri um, yeah I, I agree with Alex there is considerable overhead now with the carrot versus the tilde um, and that being mangled in each um, update of dependencies. Um, if we can do something about it, like maybe blend it, or if there's a way of setting those conventions at the package um, package manager level and avoiding and changing that, that's one solution. Another one is like uh, Alex suggested, which is just bumping a version to one and going from there and not using the zero versions. Oh, go ahead, sorry. Uh, yeah, so I, I asked David Diaz why we don't have version one of anything, and he said that basically it's because we weren't feature complete. Um, it sounds like some arbitrary line in the sand that we're never going to cross because the Go team is so much far ahead of the JS team, 
they're going to still be adding features. And there's a there's a web page somewhere that has a list of all the outstanding things that haven't been implemented yet. And that list is just going to grow forever. And we're probably never going to, you know, catch up, or at least not in a reasonable time frame. So we should just just abandon this idea and just just release version one. Dimitri, go for it. Also, we kind of have different goals with the Go, uh, Go implementation. So at some point, they might, in some instances, they might actually diverge pretty, pretty radically uh, because of the requirements of the projects. Um, as long as the hashes are the same. Yeah, <laughs> as long as that's, the hashes are the same. I think that's, I think that's pretty important. <laughs> um, the other suggestion with the package looking is. Uh, uh, by the bullet and have the two uh, the package logs for the two most popular package managers out there right now, which is Yarn and Nokia. I don't know. I mean, it's, that might be the easiest. Yeah. I mean, so the the package locks are are for us rather than for people who are depending on that. They don't make any difference to people who are installing IPFS. Um, to, if we want. If we have two package locks, then we are, it's just going to get really confusing. Uh, I'd, I'd rather switch CI to using NPM and just have everyone use NPM. I think if we're going to be checking in those uh, blocks, then, well, I mean, they might not be released, but if you are trying to do some development or run it locally, then you are still consuming those files. But yeah, we're not probably going to be obviously releasing those, but there's still going to be some um, amount of our users that are going to be running into issues related to that, even though they're probably trying to hack on the code or something. But it's it's going to be there, and we're going to run into those issues too. So. Um, yeah, I mean, we can standardize and we can just tell everybody to use MPM or be careful and mindful of uh, package lock. I don't have any, any better solution. <laughs> yeah, Zane, go. Uh, I'm curious, like, uh, when it comes to, like, using, like, Yarn for your build, do you find that Yarn just actually compiles faster because you're using the Yarn cache? Uh, versus like npm because I don't think the latest version of npm still like has a cache unless you're installing globally. Uh, Dimitri, you're muted. Uh, I think it does have a cache. Uh, cache. I'm sorry. Uh, does has anyone looked? At, yeah, I, I think it does. Have, I've seen it in the release notes. I believe. No, I think it does. I'm just behind the times. They're releasing versions. I did a bit of work in a previous contract comparing NPM and Yarn um, and found that like, if you're using NPM 5, then Yarn speed advantages kind of evaporate due to the cache. Like, once the cache is warm, there's, there's very little difference between. Cool. That makes sense then. <laughs> OK, so uh, is it best that we maybe move this offline and create an issue for, for doing, for um, swapping to using one or, or, you know, having both locks? Like I said, I'm, I'm sort of against having two lock files. It sort of opens the drawbridge for, for just supporting every lock file for every package manager. Um, but um, we can all, I don't know, maybe weigh in and, and come to a decision. Does that sound okay? Cool. Okay. Um, did we have any other questions? Let me have a quick look. Uh, da, 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 using yarn. Let's put, yeah, yeah, yeah. Plans for using package locks. Yeah, not using package locks. Okay. Um, and that's it for the questions, unless there are questions that are currently coming in. Um, any any other uh, agenda items by for anyone else before we end the call? Okay, it's been it's been very nice to speak with you all again, uh, and hopefully I'll see you um, in another week for an exciting uh, Dev Team Weekly. Uh, go team! Bye. <laughs>
Ciao. Bye.